You guys having trouble seeing your welds? Stay tuned for five awesome tips on how to fix that problem. Tip number five, upgrading your welding hood. If you're rocking one of these, you're in company with Christopher Columbus because it's probably what he wore when he was building the Santa Maria, but you know, if you got this, you probably need to upgrade. As for your real deal welding shields that you should be, and probably are using, I don't know many of you guys, this thing's probably older than me and that's pretty old, but you don't have to spend a lot of money on it. Now, the more you can spend on a shield from experience, the better off you are. The better the settings is, the more clarity you have. This, you guys won't believe what this hood costs. I bought this hood just for the lens to shoot my arc shots with, to put my cell phone and camera up against. And it's like super adjustable. Now, it is a smaller lens, but you can see good through it. It uh, has a grind mode and stuff on the side. And I think it sounds like 35 bucks, 35, 40 bucks. I mean, for auto darkening, that's not bad at all. This one goes from a grind from a 10 to a 13 shade. So this may be one of your uh, options here. I, I think it'd be really good. It'd probably help you out, especially if you're rocking old Christopher Columbus over here. But this is mine that I bought. This is the Miller Digital Infinity. It, uh, it's it got all kind of cool settings and stuff on it. And it's got a big wide. My big thing is the bigger your viewing area the better now the, when you go up on your viewing area it costs a lot more but i think this helmet was around 325 350 i'll link well i don't think you can link this one they didn't have internet when this thing was out but i'll link these two in there they make a lot of different ones in between like i said your viewing area the bigger your viewing area is the more it's going to cost but this really does help out a lot like for your peripheral visions and stuff like that and if you wear glasses or i'm not to the bifocals yet but i'm getting close but if you have bifocal stuff, be able to see down and stuff without messing your vision up. So upgrading your hood to a decent hood is a good option and it may help you guys. All right guys, tip number four are cheater lenses. And they're basically uh, magnifying glasses for your helmet. They just, see they have these little notches here and they just, uh, you just slide them down in and drop them in. You can buy different power strengths and stuff. They're kind of a pain to get in and out. I'm not gonna click this one in. But they go down and they click in and when you start to get around your 40s where I'm past, you may need a cheater lens. So this can help and sometimes I use, I don't like to use them all the time, but sometimes I'll use them when I'm like really low amperage TIG and real tight, trying to get into real tight stuff. You can slide your cheater lens or another tip is you can go like to the grocery store and buy you some regular cheap reading glasses. I think for people that don't wear glasses, that'd be the easiest thing to trying to slide this in and out. But this is another option for you that'll help you out. And Cheater Lens is a good option for it. They make them for all the helmets. Tip number three, body position. Very important with MIG weld and TIG weld. You got a lot of stuff to get in the line of sight. When I MIG weld, I drag mine because I like to be able to look behind the the nozzle and stuff and watch my puddle and everything so i like to drag mine but you got to watch to where you put your head if you're looking over this way the nozzle can block your view your hand just different there's a lot of different things that go into it but i say practice a lot before you get on your stuff and put yourself into some awkward positions because you're not always going to be welding on a nice flat table with good lighting coming down on it. so get you a bunch of scrap and just put yourself in positions that you know out of the way positions like you would be in realistically on a car because that's what i usually work on welding exhaust welding and patch panels whatever but i'm gonna get you guys around here to show you my preferred position on welding and stuff to where i can see around it and basically you're wanting to look at the back of the puddle when you're going and it shines the light basically like headlights around it and you can basically watch your path we'll get you guys around here and i'm gonna set it up and show you how i like it. all right guys i got you set up the way i would be looking at it i'm trying to keep my head out of the way but this is the angle that I'm going to want to be looking at is right here and right towards this angle like this. So you, you keep your hands out of the way and as I'm dragging, I'm going to light it up. And as you go down through here, you can watch your puddle forming and it, it'll shine around and you can see the reflection on the edges of the metal. So that's a good position to be in right there. So where you can really see good. You don't want to put a whole lot of angle to it. You want about 15 degrees is about what they call for. So, and just to where you can kind of see it, see up under, you don't want to get your head way down close to it because those fumes are toxic and you just don't want to get down in there. So this is about as close as I like to keep my head to it. Like I said, you don't want to get down like this. Of course you can see it really good, but you're going to be sucking up a lot of those fumes. So I like to get it about arm's length and you want to be good and comfortable and 
to where you can brace up and and you can come down there and you can just weld it really good and get comfortable with it. Here's another view from looking like straight down from the top. This is another reason you don't want to do this because if you notice your nozzle gets in your way, if you got your hand here braced trying to brace it up, it hides a lot of the weld. So finding the ultimate body position for you is, is a lot of preference, but practice it a lot and uh, till you can get it because you don't want to get too much angle and stuff on it. You'll start messing up your welds. So just try to get the right body position for you. That'll help you a lot. All right, guys, tip number two, lighting. Now. You can see in here, I've got a ton of light in here to do videos with and stuff, but I'm gonna tell you, this is a little idea I'd come up with, especially if you're under cars and stuff, is a tape of flashlight to your uh, hood up here. And man, it'll make all the difference. I'm gonna set it up here and let you see the difference. I'm gonna cut some of these lights, cause like I said, we got a lot of lighting in here. But I have these, like it's a Delphi headlamp, which uh, I have a affiliate link for these if you wanna check these out. I'll put a link down there for them and a couple flashlights like this this little light here i use every day great little led lights but you can actually put these things on your helmet because they're a strap and you wouldn't believe the difference that it makes even with these good lens when it gets dark underneath you can't even see where to start especially when you're tig and you got both hands up and trying to do stuff but adding a light like velcro tape or anything out I'll use like gaffer's tape or something to tape it on just temporarily. Or like I said, you can get some Velcro and put on your helmet, take it on, put it off when you like. But we'll actually show you the difference by what it does by adding lighting and it just makes so much a better job. All right, we're gonna put this. One cool thing about this Adelphi lamp here is this uh, motion activated too. These things are pretty affordable. Like I said, I'll put a link to them in the description below. I use this thing all the time. But the cool thing is, is what I do is I stick it here now this can be kind of fun because this thing is not round and I'll hook it under under this part here get it out of, out of your sight but it also has that little spotlight there that'll help you out some so let's try this out real quick See, it has a little motion activated thing. It works good. So I'll uh, set the camera up down here and show you there. I'll cut some of these lights down. Yeah, you can you can still put it on and stuff. It. All right, guys, let me show you the difference here. Now, that's with the light off and the light on, and you can really tell how you can get down in here and uh, see a whole lot better. It's just a lot darker, you got more shadows and stuff, but I think adding a light, man, it makes a big difference and stuff. When you strike dark, you'll be able to see it a whole lot better, so. That's a tip I think you guys ought to add on. Uh, I think I'm gonna keep one on mine. I think I'm gonna try to figure out how to take his head strap off, maybe Velcro this Adelphi one on my helmet and just leave it on all the time, but. It's got the cool motion sensor so it ain't always on. You can just switch it off with your hand like that. But yeah, give that a try. I think it'll help you guys out a whole lot. All right, guys, was down to the last tip. Tip number one, I think is one of the most important things you can do when you can't see welding. Besides body position, I'm gonna say that's number two probably, but is your cover lens on the front of your shield. People, and I'm guilty too, don't change this enough, especially when you do a lot of MIG welding, you get spatter back, stick welding especially puts little divots all in it and it just it'll refract light it runs everywhere you look through this thing when it's nice before you strike your arc and it looks good and clear to you you strike that arc and then you just see rays of light just like the laser beam show going everywhere and it just messes your sight up i think this is one of the most important things and you can buy these forever but this is for that they sent with the yes welder and you just, uh, it's just a protective lens that goes on the outside and you have one little small one on the inside that you need to change, you just peel this film off. These things are cheap. I keep a whole box of them for my miller and just keep them changed out. Cause like I said, being able to see this stuff is one of the most important things. Once you learn the steps, you got that. But if you can't see what you're doing, it shows in your welds when you, 
when you take care of your welding hood and keep a good clean hood. I'll uh, get the camera down here and show you what it looks like. It looks clear through here, and then I'll, I'll shine my little bright LED on it, and it'll show you how the light refracts on the lens. All right, guys, you can see how clear it is right now. I'm going to uh, turn the light on and show you how a scratched up lens will make stuff look. See how that light just looks like laser beams shooting everywhere? And if you're sitting here welding, it'll just, it runs all over it and stuff. So, yeah, make sure you got a good clean lens on there. That's not all scratched up because it makes a big difference. And not having these laser beams going everywhere. And this is what I'm talking about here. You see how the lens is all scratched up? The only thing I had to do is just change this plastic piece out. Now, the inside one, it's a little, we'll see these old ones have screen saver. It's a little scratched up too. The best thing to do if you're going to clean these is I blow them off first and then take you a nice damp towel and just wipe it off. But after a while, it's going to get to where it's scratched up. So just keep you some of It's just cheap insurance to help you see a lot better. All right, guys. Hope you all enjoyed this video on how to see better when you're welding. Hopefully you can take some of these tips and tricks and it'll help you get a little better at this. Like I said, get you some scraps sit down for a day and put yourself into just awkward positions and stuff when you're welding because you're going to run into that working on cars or anything like that. And had a ton of guys saying, I can't see when I'm welding. What, what do I need to do? So hopefully these five tips helped you guys out. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, and remember, be kind to one another. Jesus loves you, so do we. God bless. We gone.